Hey there, horror movie tea sippers. The following podcast episode will contain spoilers for the movie we are about to review. If you have not seen the movie and do not wish to have anything ruined prematurely, please do not continue to watch or listen until you have seen the movie. And welcome to the Horror Movie Tea Podcast. Today we are covering Anaconda from 1997. The one that spawned the franchise. Yes. But before we go into the reveal, let's grab our cups and talk about tea. So, we're doing repeats again. I'm doing the Republic of Tea Passion Fruit Papaya. It's got... Black tea, sunflower petals, passion fruit, papaya, and pineapple flavor. You know, sunflower petals, that's really interesting. Yeah. It's different. Yeah. So I am drinking Republic of Tea's Relax, Ruibo, Standaline, and Citrus Tea. And it has, everything is organic in it, so let me just skip that part. Um, it's red Ruibos, cinnamon, orange flavor, dandelion root, orange peel, ginger root, and vanilla flavor. And it's caffeine free. And thank you to the Republic of Tea for for allowing us to continue to do what we love. And for our tea sippers out there, brew yourself a cup of tea, sit back, relax, and we hope you enjoy the review. So for the summary, a film crew is taken hostage by an insane hunter who forces him along his on his quest to capture the world's largest and deadliest snake. That one is credit to IMDb. Yes. <laughs> but so for entertainment, I know you've seen this movie a lot, so I hope this I grew doesn't up with this movie. Like when it came out in 97, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I watched it then. Like when I was seven. <sighs> so. <laughs> so I would give this movie a six for entertainment. Not too mad. <laughs> like it. I I think I had seen it maybe once before as like an off thing. But um, trying to watch it with like pretty fresh eyes. It feels like a very typical action movie. Which I know you like. Yeah. Uh, but it's like it, it I know makes it's it not for everyone. <laughs> it's like you have those very cookie cutter like characters, and very, and then the plot's pretty easy to like see through. Like none of the characters are that likable, except for uh, Terry and Mateo. Um, those are really the only characters I'm like, yeah, it'd be nice if they lived, but it's like, it's not like I love them so much that I'd be upset, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just like, they're, they're the most likable out of like the rest. Cause it's like the rest, they're either assholes or they're whiny and you're just like, shut up. <laughs> um, the CG effects though are freaking hilarious. Like, it was the 90s. <laughs> I know, but it's like... I get it, though. It's bad. Yeah. And the fact that they use so much practical effects, I yeah. feel like it would have helped them a lot to continue those practical effects. I mean, at least at times they could have used animatronics or something. Yeah, because it's like, it wouldn't be so bad if, like, it wasn't an obvious green screen cut. Like, yeah. It looks like it's this paper doll of this person. <laughs> like it, it was just like really awkward. Um, <laughs> but I know I'm shitting on this movie. <laughs> but, didn't but, bother me as much as some of the sci-fi originals we've seen, or some of the other. Yeah, I mean for the yes, yes, we've seen worse ones for yes. sure. Uh, I think a part of the reason why I'm so rough on this movie, though, is the fact that by 97, we had a slew of other, like, creature feature monster type of movies. Like, the fact that they showed the snake so much. Like, I feel like the buildup to the snake was pretty decent. Yeah. But then once they started showing the snake... 
it just they showed it way too much i i felt like it would have been a lot more impactful and scary if it was more like jaws yeah where and then the that way they wouldn't even have to worry about the cg they could just have like the animatronic head pop out of the water or whatever they they had some missed opportunities honestly even with the build-up yeah yeah so um the kills are for the most part pretty ridiculous and hilarious um gary is one of the characters that comes to mind um and there there's some also some really strange dialogue choices now i don't know if it was like a mistake and they just forgot to cut it or what but it's when the hunter guy grabbed i forgot the girl's name but girl that dies whiny girl that dies um, yeah, I wasn't mad that she died. Yeah, and Terry yells at the guy, get your hands off of her, but he's literally not touching her. I backed it up yeah. to rewatch, and he is not touching. It's like, yeah, he's kind of close to her, but he's not touching her. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, that doesn't make any sense. I was like, okay. Um, but yeah, it's like, it definitely, it's just like a cheesy, like, action movie which um i know a lot other other people enjoy more than i do uh which is um but so it's not let's see i did enjoy the movie and i would watch it again it's just not more quite your to, cup of tea. yes because it, it's like i would re-watch it if i was watching it with friends and it was with the intent to make fun of it and that that's my criteria. But otherwise, I would be perfectly fine not watching this movie again. But yeah. So, I do enjoy this movie. I give it a 7. It's not, like, my go-to, but it is a good movie, and I did grow up with it. So, slight nostalgia. <laughs> Stupid. There are some things that I don't quite understand realistically <laughs> and there's obviously things that are stretched for movie's sake because oh, we'll got a movie that. oh yes <laughs> for sure this is like 100 percent movie's got a movie whole scenario like there was no reason why he would need to hijack a film crew for this could have been literally any other boat <laughs> yeah it just happened to be the film crew. But to force them along instead of just going with his hunter friend and all, it just... It seemed very forced. Yeah. For that. I agree. But um, entertainment-wise, it was fun to watch. They did have some decent build-up with most of the scenes, even if the CG is definitely dated. <laughs> but it's still enjoyable to watch you can tell the characters apart even if they are a bit cliched you can yeah <laughs> they're not completely all the same <laughs> well i like that not only did they make the characters more distinctly different but they chose actors that were characteristically a lot yes. different too yes they were varied so they didn't all look exactly the same. Yeah, it's like, oh, we all need a white guy that has brown hair. Yes. <laughs> it's like, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they were very, you could tell the difference in their personality types. Their interactions were decent. So it was, it was nice there. Um, I feel like you're in the jungle. You could have used more animals. And shots of nature and things. Yeah, for real. For them being in the jungle, You're in the it Amazon. seems pretty, pretty <laughs> quiet. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. Especially right by a river. Mm -hmm. Come on. No jaguars. I know it cost or... money. They did have a jaguar. That's true. They did. They, they did. had a jaguar for all of 30 seconds. Yeah. And then they had it as a stuffed animal or something that got eaten by... <laughs> By the snake. But <laughs> still. <laughs> um, I love when they do that, though, they're, where they're like, our monster is better than your monster. Where it's like, it has, it's like uh, in Meg in the I book, mean, 
they have the Megalodon eat a T-Rex. Like, oh, oh so you so amazing. I'm so sad they didn't put that in the movie. Like, <laughs> It was unnecessary in the movie. It would have been great and hilarious, but it was unnecessary. Well, essentially, they're like, oh, here's like a prehistoric scene and we're just going to have. And, but it's like, yeah, anyways, we're not talking about <laughs> Meg. Topic. We've already covered that movie. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I did appreciate that they did have the Jaguar in there, even just for, you know, <laughs> 30 seconds or so a brief moment before it died because it is accurate to um the food chain basically of the amazon so normally the jaguar is at the top but anacondas do occasionally eat them so that was nice so they did have some accurate things in there, and we'll get to a lot more of that in the realism, don't worry. But <laughs> it, it was nice that they did try to add certain things like that in there. Um, I did like that when they had the babies everywhere, they actually used baby snakes. They did use a lot of boas. A lot of boas. There, I think, were a few baby anacondas. They were very young. Very, very young. But I think there might have been a few. But most of them were boas. <laughs> sweet, sweet boba, ba- boa babies. Yeah. Which, anacondas are part of that family. Yeah. But <laughs> it was nice seeing all of them there. And I love how the hunter guy was just like, go back to your mama. <laughs> Not that the mama gives a crap once the eggs are laid. <laughs> But, you know, this is fine. Like, the mother snake doesn't care for the brood once they hatch. They kind of just go off on their own and do their own thing. Which, from my understanding, is pretty common with reptiles as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Most, yes. There are some, like, alligators, crocodiles, yeah. caimans. Oh, and then they keep their babies in their mouth. Yes. And their little babies <laughs> sticking their little heads up. They're like, Mama! It's just, ah. They're so cute. <laughs> <laughs> so it's but it is extremely rare that most reptiles um most of them don't take care of their young <laughs> so while funny our little squee moment <laughs> for the day <laughs> while funny it was a little inaccurate him saying going back to your mama <laughs> um i think most of what i had was just factual stuff that bugged me Or realistic things. Yeah. (laughs) Though, they also did have a couple of funny things, like the noise that the snake makes. Like the scream type noise. Yeah, I had that. That's part of realism, too. Yeah. It screams so much, too. (laughs) It wasn't like Jaws, where it lets out this little. "Ah," It was so much. It was so much all throughout "Ah, the movie. ah, ah." Yeah, that's not how snakes do. No. (laughs) To me, it made it a little funnier. But again, I also grew up with it. And so I think that's part of what made it not as scary <laughs> growing up. Yeah, that... like, that's not how snakes are. That's not sounds that they make. Because I was that weird little child that I've always loved snakes. And I would look up information about snakes. <laughs> Even when I was like, five (laughs) so and learn about snakes and different types and habitats and all that so watching that movie completely inaccurate even that young i was like yeah no that's not (laughs) this is definitely a movie (laughs) and took me out of the the scariness and made it not as real and made it a lot more fun to watch yeah. So. <laughs> anyway. That's what I had for entertainment. <laughs> uh, Shall we get to the rants? <laughs> yes. So for realism, I gave it a one. So. I, I It's not just about the snakes. It's also about the characters themselves. Like, for example... Terry literally asks 
the guy, oh, is that fireflies? I'm sorry. We have fireflies in America. We oh, have them well, in urban settings. I see fireflies all the time. We do here, yes, but I don't know where she's from. Fireflies, I feel like, are a pretty common, like, insect. And plus, like, even if she had never seen fireflies before, the fact that it sees the insects lighting up... Which is what fireflies are famous for. It's just the fact that the way that she asked it. So it'd be different if she's like, oh, that's cool fireflies. You know, that's different than like, oh, is that fireflies? So the thing that bugged me about that scene Hmm. wasn't the fact that she was asking it like that, because I took it more as flirting. Um, What bugged me is that they were clearly just lights that were going on and off. It's a lot. It was a lot, and it was just, like, legitimately, like, lights flashing. Like, there was no in and out, like, actual fireflies. Yeah. Or anything, or lightning bugs, however you want to refer to them, wherever you're from. But, (laughs) like, there's a... It's a subtle flash, and then it kind of dims. Yeah. And then also, since they're, like... You know, we're in a three-dimensional space, you know, since they're all in different areas, you also get, like, like closer up and then farther away. But no, it felt very... It looked flat. Yes. Yes. They're all in the same spot. It's like they had a board with little light bulbs popping out, and they're like, boop, boop. (laughs) That's what bugged me about that. (laughs) Yeah, that did bug me, too. (laughs) Um, And then... uh, I know there's some controversy about the fish swimming up the urethra and stuff like that. And so whenever he mentioned that, I did look it up. And yeah, there's like legends and stories about it, but they've all been disproven. Like they've literally like, well, I won't go through the details because it's involving urine. But the point is, well, the first thing is they, they verified that they're not attracted to urine. And second, they're like... Those fish are too big to go up your yes. urethra. Like, your, your urethra is, like, really it's thin. Tiny. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. And then... <laughs> what I wrote in my notes is, they made the anaconda scream, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> um, and then also... I think this was uh, still Gary's death. But it's, like, the anaconda swimming away... And you can see the person's face. Yeah. Through the, yeah, no. The, uh, an anaconda skin would be way too... Bulge. Yeah, but their skin is way too thick. You wouldn't be able to yeah. see, like, where the eyes are, where the mouth is. It'd just no. be, a, yeah, a bulge, as yeah. you said. Well, especially since they're constricting their prey, not just before they ingest them, but as they're swallowing them, they're getting more and more compacted. That's true, too. I didn't so, think about that. Yeah, because no. <laughs> you they would have to get to... Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, also, how often the snake eats. So, because snakes are cold-blooded, uh, they actually don't eat that often. And it pl- takes a long time for them to ingest their yes. food because it's so large. So, I looked it up, and anacondas can actually go weeks up to months, yeah. depending the, mm-hmm. on the size of their prey, without eating. So it wouldn't be able to just go boop, 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 boop. So boop, they boop. did mention that in the movie as well, mm-hmm. in the very, very beginning with the text. Now, the thing is with that, they also mentioned that at times they'll throw up what they've eaten. Yeah. So they can ingest something else. Yeah. Now, that snake could be doing that. Partly for territorial reasons. So, in that situation, that's why I didn't count off too much for it. I feel like it's a little far-fetched that he kept hunting that boat specifically. Yeah. And kept trying to get those specific people. Because F them in particular. Um, I feel like it wouldn't have done it that many times. I can see it doing it once or twice, like throwing up what it had eaten and going after them again. Well, I was like, I would want to double check what they stated, because whenever I looked it up, it said Mm -hmm. that snakes regurgitated that whenever 
they were scared and they yeah. felt like they need to get away quickly. Yeah, it, rather was, than, it was more of a they feel threatened. Yeah. And they need to be able to move faster. Yeah, rather than, oh, I'm going to kill multiple prey. Yeah. Um, it, it didn't seem like the regurgitation was like a, a hunting yeah, and that's why I said for territorial reasons it might have done it, but not that many times. And yeah. it's still a bit of a stretch, I know. Yeah, that, yeah. But well, because it's like, I don't even know how, if snakes are that territorial, especially, I mean, I could picture like a snake against another it, snake, but. It happens on occasion, but it's fairly rare. It, it's fairly rare. Um, oh, and then, uh, but my last point is the, the, um, they mentioned that anacondas can be up to 40 feet yes. long. I'm glad you put that I did too. <laughs> and while that is technically possible it's highly highly unlikely the the longest anaconda ever recorded it was 33 feet that's what i found too and i was doing some searching <laughs> yeah because from my understanding the biggest I found. <laughs> is uh it's kind of like lobsters where it's like as long as they're shedding skin, they get, like, slightly mm -hmm. bigger. But it's like, you know, it. they, they can only grow so fast, yes. though. So, and their average lifespan in the wild is 10 years. Oh, dang. Only 10? Mm -hmm. It's the jungle. <laughs> it's, it's a little rough out there. <laughs> yeah. It's very rough out there. <laughs> so... Um, if they're in captivity, though, they don't grow as big. Oh, is it because they're in... Just different environment. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was wondering if it's kind of like goldfish where it just doesn't expand. Or, well, I'm you know a... what I mean, like... Yeah, yeah, like... That might be part of it, but it's more of an environmental thing. So, they tend to live longer, but they don't get as big. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. On average, it's usually, I believe it was, uh, yeah, 25 to 28 feet average. So I wonder if it's like a environmental pressure then. Because it's like, obviously, the bigger you are, then the more advantage you have. Yes. And the less things want to mess with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The caveat to that is the bigger you are, the heavier you are, too, which requires a lot more to move. Yeah. Like, tree. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, now they they do hunt mostly like in the water, so that was fairly accurate. They will hunt in the jungle itself, but they'll stick close to the water because it's easier for them to move that way, and they're faster in the water. Makes sense. Yes. They're also not the longest snake, but they are the biggest, meaning heftiest. Beefy. Yes. Beefy boys. Big beefy boys. <laughs> the females, though, are larger than the males. Oh. Mm -hmm. it, it is interesting how the animal kingdom kind of, like, favors it. each. Yeah. It depends. It really heavily on, depends yeah. on the kind of animal. Or so. or some, uh, or, like, amphibian. I think it's amphibians where they're like, oh, I'll just, I'll just choose what sex I am. This yeah. is fine. <laughs> Depending it's, on what I feel of, like. Yeah, it's a lot of frogs, some toads. Um, if there's not enough of a specific gender, then they'll switch. <laughs> so that it's a bit more dispersed <laughs> and varied. Which is kind of cool. I guess that, that I should have known that because that's the whole yeah. premise of Jurassic Park. Yes. <laughs> and that's where one of the, one of the things that just made it fail epically. <laughs> They're like, haha! You they thought. made a mistake. <laughs> but in, anything yes. else for realism? Um, I gave it a two, mostly because the interactions themselves were believable. Um, but everything else was 
See, for me, it's like while it was believable, it just still felt cheesy. And that's why I yeah, wasn't on board. I get it. I get it. I get it. It's just I wanted to point out that's why I gave it mm-hmm. a bit higher of a rating than you. Because normally I'm lower than you. <laughs> but this one, um, <laughs> I always have to laugh hysterically, too. In the very, very beginning of the movie, when the snake Bust through the bottom of the boat specifically to attack the poacher dude. <laughs> yeah. Because, no, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> Even if a snake is seriously pissed off and gunning for something in particular, it's not going to bust through a boat like that. It's going to go onto the boat <laughs> to get to it. But it's not going to bust through the boat like that. Um, I also found, like, the biggest one that I could find in researching anacondas was 33 feet long, so. And keep in mind, whenever we say that, it's kind of like sharks, where it's like, that's just that's absolute just what's maximum. Been but yeah. but it, it's possible that maybe there's something bigger out there. But the point is that the mm-hmm. average is going to still be a lot smaller than that. Oh, yeah. Because you said it was 25 to 28 feet 25 on average. 25 to 28 feet on average, yes. Mm-hmm. With the females being larger than the males. So, um, again, the, the catfish that swims up the urethra is a myth. <laughs> don't, don't let them tell you. The, I think, yeah, the <laughs> candiru. Um, there's no way when he, when the guy goes down to free the propeller from the rope, there's no way in hell he didn't notice a wasp in the mouthpiece. And if he didn't, if he was just really that oblivious and that unobservant, the wasp would not have waited that long to attack him. Pretty much as soon as that mouthpiece was on him, it would have been like, F you in particular. <laughs> I don't know if anyone's ever met a wasp. To be fair, from what I hear, the ones in the UK are not quite as aggressive as the ones we have here. Hmm. Well, and then but also I feel like-, like in an entrapped space. <laughs> yeah. With air flowing through it constantly, I feel like the wasp would be like, oh, hell no. Well, and I wonder, uh, wasps versus hornets, which ones are more aggressive? But I know, like, both of them are known for being pretty aggressive. Yeah. I feel like wasps, probably. But that's just based on what I've experienced here. (laughs) And I know it's different in other areas. So, but this is also supposed to be in the Amazon, where literally everything wants to kill you. I mean, insects in the jungles tend to be a lot larger. Yes. And a lot more aggressive. Yes. Because they have to be. Yeah. Yeah. So, no. (laughs) Just... No, to that whole scene. He got the mouthpiece in, went down, freed the propeller, then it decided to attack him. No. Mm Mm-mm. That's not how it works. (laughs) Which, like, I don't know. If I'm paying anything on my mouth, I'm going to, like, inspect it. Especially in the jungle! (laughs) You're in the Amazon! I don't care that you've been on the boat the entire time. Things can still get on the boat. Your boat is not safe. (laughs) It's not safe. You've been going under tree limbs and things. Things can get on the boat. (laughs) Uh, So they did make an effort for most of the movie to have the snake constrict the people and the various prey in the movie. But there is a scene where the snake also snaps the dude's neck. Yeah. That is not how snakes do. (laughs) 
they they squeeze until there is no life <laughs> which i think depending on the shape of the prey as they constrict it could potentially break their neck but it's not this it's not but like they're the snake not going is intentionally to, like yeah they're not gonna bite the head and twist <laughs> yeah so you know could you like one thing i don't really think about much but depending on the type of prey like as it's constricting like the longer you live the tighter it's going to squeeze and mm-hmm. the higher the chances that like it's going to break your bones oh yeah as it's constricting like, that's a common occurrence actually yeah <sighs> Um, and there would, I would imagine, be occasions where the eyes would pop out. Just from the pressure. But yeah, with every exhale, it gets tighter. So you can't even breathe. You suffocate and you're just being broken. Yeah. Not pleasant. It sucks. <laughs> the animal kingdom is a, a very harsh yes. place. But amazing. <laughs> It is amazing. It's kind of cool to think about. Let's it be is honest. cool. Well, it's like, it's just so crazy. I always think about like humans and where we're in the animal yeah. kingdom on how like not that long ago, we used to be a part of that. Oh, yeah. And now it feels like we're so separated from yes. it, you know? And that's because we were able to create tools and technology and we stayed together because there's safety in numbers. <laughs> so... We had some advantages, but if you put just a regular human with no tools in the wild, we're very (laughs) squishy. Yeah. And we don't have many things to fight back with. Yeah, I I feel like the only advantages we had was our brains and our running. Yes. Yes. We are basically endurance based Back, way, way back in, like, hunter-gatherer times, that's actually how we would end up getting most of our food. We would tire them out. We would tire them out. There's actually... um, We would walk them to death. (laughs) I know there's one tribe in Africa. I don't know if there's more than one tribe, but there is a documented tribe in Africa that still does the exact same method. And it's just them, like, you can watch them, like, they're just jogging after the... And they're jogging for forever, yes. sometimes days. Mm-hmm. But the crazy. herd doesn't have time to stop and rest. So they just, they get too tired and they can't fight back. And some would just drop dead on the way. <laughs> it's just so funny, like, thinking, like, modern day America especially. Yeah. Um, we're... we're <laughs> We're overweight and very, like... Yeah, we've gone backwards. Um, But also, how terrifying, just thinking from a prey standpoint, how terrifying would it be to know that there is something that keeps coming after you and it doesn't stop? Yeah. That every time you stop to try to rest, they're there. Yeah, we're freaking scary. (laughs) That would be terrifying. It's like without tools, we're scary. And with tools, we're even scarier. Yes. Yes. We're a problem. (laughs) We are a problem. But yeah. Um, And then the the noises that the snake makes just gets Ah. me every time. (laughs) Ah. And then like whenever it was like on fire and moving, it's like, ah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, the final death scene always gets me. (laughs) So, and the fact that they had to go through that much to kill the snake, that was, that was something else. (laughs) Yep. But they had to make it epic, though. (laughs) But I do feel like, on the whole, it's a fun movie to watch, just to wrap it up a little, um... There were some missed opportunities. I feel like they could have decreased the amount of CGI that they used with it and shown it a little less if they had more, like, rustling in the the jungle or movement in the water. And they could have also played it off as it's not always just the snake. Yeah. There are caimans and things in that water, too. They could make them, like, second guess what it is. Yes. 
And then as people like start slowly disappearing, they're uh-huh. like, Bahar. yes. <laughs> and a lot of their kills, again, snakes don't scream like that. A lot of the kills are actually rather quiet. So the people would just be gone. Yeah. See, that's way more terrifying. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So they could have dialed it up a little bit that way. <laughs> or dialed it down. Well, yeah. <laughs> depending on how you're looking at it. They could have dialed up the horror. Yeah. By dialing down the CGI. <laughs> and, then and the using the environment. Screaming. Yes. And using the environment to your advantage. Personally. But that's what I had for this movie. Yeah, like... Wasn't bad for the 90s, though. All things considered. Overall, it's it's an over-the-top monster movie. But it is fun to make fun of or, like, be a background movie. But, yeah, I still agree with my previous statement that I'd be fine never watching it again. <laughs> I'll still probably watch it again. <laughs> and pay attention to it. But I know it's not your thing. (laughs) But thank you so much for joining us today. And please comment on what you thought of the movie. If you'd like to recommend a movie, game, or tea and keep up to date with our content, you can find us on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Discord, TikTok, and most places you listen to podcasts. I really need to lower down that list. (laughs) (laughs) All the things. All the things. And if you'd like to support the podcast, please subscribe, like, and share our content. If you'd like to support us monetarily, we do have a Teespring and PayPal, or we have our affiliate link with Republic of Tea available. It does not affect the price of the tea. It just allows us to continue to do what we love. All of those sites we mentioned will be linked down below. But until the next time, guys, stay safe and stay spoopy. Bye! Bye.